Today on Stitches TV, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a simple scoop neck, scoop back swimsuit. I feel like a bit of a flasher, but take a deep breath, a bit like this. There are several ways that you can go about making your swimsuit or making the pattern for your swimsuit. Now like with this bikini tutorial, we showed you how you can get an old bikini and use it as a pattern to make your bikini. And you can do the same with a swimsuit, but a much easier way to do it is like this. Now today, for our swimsuit tutorial, we're going to use one of the Bags of Love Cut and Sew swimsuit kits. Now you'll also need some sewing machine needles for stretch fabric, and you'll need some swimwear elastic that's this kind of rubbery elastic but I think you can use regular elastic if you can't get hold of it. Now the other mega mega important thing that you need are twin needles. You need a packet of twin needles. Now what they are, they are twin needles. You get two needles on one shank. Now the cut and sew swimsuit already includes a centimetre seam allowance so I don't need to add any seam allowance. All I do is I cut along the lines. Now the good thing about these swimsuits is that they come in loads of sizes. They come in extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. So there's bound to be a size that fits you. So just cut out all of your pieces, cutting along the lines. Now when you've cut out your uh, swimsuit, don't throw away all the scrappy white bits because you need one of those hygienic patches to go inside. So trace it out of the leftover scraps, which goes on the other side, of course. Also, this is your opportunity to slightly redesign the shape of the costume if you want. So you've got all your fabric here, you've got the basic shape, you know it's going to fit the size that you've chosen. But for example, I quite like mine to be scooped a bit more on the neck. So now is my time to be able to create that change. Now the very first thing that I'm going to do is this. This is my back of my costume and that's my bottom there. This is my front. I'm going to put my front and my back right sides together and you see this seam down here where they just about line up and you see this hygienic patch. I'm going to create a little sandwich there. So I've got the hygienic patch, then I've got the swimming costume back and then I've got the top, the front rather, and I'm going to sew all three of those together using a small zigzag, very important zigzag stitch. So I've got everything in position, I've got the needle in just to hold it all, I've put my machine to zigzag, number two, that's the size, and I've got it on a number two stitch. Now I'm not sure if it's going to be too big or too small, so let's have a look. Now I'm doing a very small seam allowance here, so it's not actually a centimetre, it's more like half a centimetre. And I'm not going to stretch anything because the stitch is a stretch stitch. I'm going backwards and forwards there at the beginning. No stretching, just feeding it through. And it should be... Okay, so let's have a look. So you'll end up with this, which needs to flop over that way to become the kind of hygienic patch. Now, you're going to have to stay stitch that in place, but that can happen when you apply the elastic, or you can just sort of do it roughly now with a large zigzag stitch. So using a large zigzag stitch, I'm flopping that back on itself so it's all nice and neat there 
and I'm just going to stay stitch that into place. Now no stretching, okay? It's just a stay stitch, we're just holding it in place. Large zigzag stitch. Just stitching it as if you're overlocking the edge. No stretching. And then do the same on the other side. So it looked like that. Now I don't know if you know about this, but in general there's sort of a rule that when you sew, where possible, you have your fabric to the left of the sewing foot. So I've had to flop it over to do the other side, but that's absolutely fine. Same process, zigzag stitch. So the next bit is really easy. Not that that was difficult. So I've got the front of the costume and the back of the costume and I'm going to put them right sides together now. Okay, so you put your costume right sides together. Now because I've got a design feature that I'm lining up as well, I've sort of put a little notch there and then a notch on the other side as well because I really want to line up my kind of printed belt that I've got going on. Then I'm going to start with the zigzag stitch here, coming all the way up the side seam to the armpit. So this is how we stitch up the side seams. We put our zigzag stitch to quite large, like a number five in terms of the zigzag width. And the size of my stitch is about a number three. And we're going to zigzag the edge of the fabric together because not only does it finish off the edge, but mainly it holds it together. So I'm going to go forwards and back in the beginning, and I'm not stretching, I'm just feeding it through the machine, making sure that my fabric is perfectly lined up. You can always add some notches there. Until I get to where the end of the seam is, where the armpit is. Now if I didn't do this zigzag on the edge, what I have found is the fabric slips around or gets sucked down underneath. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew where the tops of the V's go in there. So I'm just going to start it off backwards and forwards. So it's not, I'm not pulling it, I'm not stretching it, I'm just guiding it along until I get to the end and I'll go backwards and forwards there. And then you'll see it looks like this, can you see that? And then the other side looks like that, which is fine, look, you'll see it's all stretchy. See, it's stretching, no seams are breaking or anything. So you can see how it's really coming together now. Now all we have to do is, you know what we did with the side seam, we have to do exactly the same on the shoulder seam. So you'll simply put your fabric right sides together and they should look something like that. So you've got the large zigzag on the edge and then the small zigzag seam just on the inside of the, the V's of the zig, big zigzags. Now for the exciting bit, which you're probably all really scared of, but really don't worry about it at all, it'll be fine. Now what we have to do is, we have to zigzag this elastic onto the edge, all of our raw edges, around the edge of the legs and around the edge of the scoop back and scoop front and the arm. So we're not measuring our elastic to make it fit. We're just going to find a sort of unassuming place to begin and then just start stitching our elastic on. So I think somewhere under the crotch is probably fine. So I'm going to put that in position, line it up with the edge. Now you can practice this on a scrap first. I'm not going to go backwards and forwards. I've got my largest zigzag stitch and I'm making sure 
But as I sew, I, you know, I'm giving it a little tug, but hardly anything at all, just a little tug. But it's not much at all. And I'm zigzagging the elastic going all the way around the edge. This at the moment is the leg. So it's like hardly any stretch at all, just a tiny bit. So doing this is simply to hold the elastic in place. Now we're coming back to the beginning again. All right. Now the reason why we didn't need to measure out a circle and make sure it fits is because why? <laughs> this is so much easier, surely. So I'm making sure it meets the other one. And then I'm just zigzagging it. And I'll probably go backwards and forwards there where it meets, just to make sure it stays together. Now, because the bit where it goes to the armpit is a bit sharp, I have decided, first of all, I'm going to take off that, um, I've decided not to go all the way around that bit there, because that just makes my life really difficult. Why do I want to do that? So I'm just going to start where it goes into the V. Get it in position. and then start zigzagging it just to stay on going all the way around yeah but don't pull too much but you have to pull just a little bit of tension on that elastic so I'm coming to the other side now and I'll stop before the side seam there. And then I'll just chop off the excess elastic. We've zigzagged all of our exposed edges, trapping the elastic on the inside. Because what happens is we're then going to hem that edge and stitch it from the top with a twin needle which means it still stretches. Right so we're gonna put a twin needle on our machine now. Don't be scared it's nothing at all. So it, with your machine you'll probably have an adapter like this. If you don't I have been known to just put a bobbin on the bobbin thing and just let it, you know, don't push it over, let it just be free and thread with um, thread from there. But we do have an adapter. So I'm simply going to put my thread on the extra spool. Now I could just thread them all together or I just add it. So in this situation I'm just adding it. So we've got two lines of threads. Now you can see this in more detail. I've got a tutorial of show, showing you how to sew with the twin needle. I'm taking out the existing needle and I'm going to put the twin needle on with the flat bit at the back. So once you've threaded your needle, it's a good idea to practice on a scrap first of all, but I'm confident that I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to fold back my hem and start in a place that isn't going to sort of be a prominent place. So look, I folded back my hem and put my needles in. Now really mega important. Gosh, I nearly forgot. I've got to put it back to a straight stitch and take off the zigzag and then sew at your normal size of stitch. So my normal size of stitch for doing this is, I would say, about two and a half through. So I'm folding it back and hardly any stretch as I sew. I'm just taking it back to its normal position. So 
keeping your seam allowance going towards the back and making sure that you're definitely capturing your hem you just sew all the way round. Now the good thing about twin needles is if you do go a bit wonky like I have there somehow it doesn't show because they're still equidistant from the edge and it stretches because on the other side it's a zigzag. So do that to all of your edges. Now one of the hardest bits to sew are that really sharp little armpit. Now do you know what I'm going to put two cheeky little snips in there just to allow a little bit more movement. So when I'm sewing the armpit I'm folding it back first and I'm not going to start right in. I'm starting a little bit of a way up. I'm not going to go backwards and forwards just going to start sewing halfway up. So I've folded it back and I'm just sewing and if there is any stretch I'm stretching it out only as much as I need to to make it flat. Now we're coming to that crucial bit where it goes under the armpit, the tricky crucial bit. So let's see what we're going to do. I'm going to fold it back. Now it's not easy, I'm not going to pretend that it is. So I'm quite close to the edge there, I haven't got very much hem there. Let's see what happens. And then back to where I started, going backwards and forwards. So that is it, we are done, we have made our own swimsuit. So you must admit that was pretty easy and all made using a zigzag stitch and twin needle, no special equipment like an overlocker. Now I've got two things to tell you about this. So first of all, how brilliant is it? that you can design your own print for your swimming costume. That's quite amazing. Secondly, you don't even need to make it. You can just order one ready-made. But if you fancy a challenge, you can order the cut and sew version, which is obviously cheaper, upload your own design, and it gets sent out to you in about two or three days. Brilliant. Or there's another option, you can order the fabric. It's the Shiny Lycra 160 GSM, I think. And just order enough to make a swimsuit, which I found was about 80 centimetres by 80 centimetres. Thank you so much for watching Stitchless TV. I'll put all the necessary links in the description below. See you again very soon. Bye.